Previously on The Business. Let's turn our attention now to franchising a little bit more. It is F&B's The Business, brought to you by F&B Business Banking. Uh, and a little store that opened up uh, just around the corner from where I live, actually, the other day, is a pizza place by the name of Andicios. You can see their little red scooters riding all around town. Uh, and they're just popping up literally on every corner. Owner of uh, of the franchise, the franchisor, is Charlie Liasidis. Uh, did I say your surname correctly there, Charlie? Is that correct? Yes, you did. You did. Charlie Liasidis. Ah, there you go. Welcome to the business, sir. It's nice to have you here. Thank you. Thanks for having me on the show. Uh, what a successful business you're running at the moment. I see your stores are opening up at every corner. What's going on? Uh, we're trying. We're trying. <laughs> We op- we've opened up a couple of stores. We're opening a store number seven at the moment in uh, Leaping Frog in Four Ways. And we've had a uh, strong, steady growth. Thank God. It's been good for us. Where did the concept uh, of, of Andicios originate from? You, uh, you've got a, sp- a special model, which is not just what every other pizza store in town is doing. I'll get to that in a sec. Where did this concept that you, that, that you, you came up with come from? Look, it's, it's my own idea. I've been in the restaurant game for many years, and uh, I actually had a nightclub in the old days with a little Italian restaurant next door to it. And the people just created, there was such a demand for people wanting to eat after the jaw and wanting to eat after hours, and I built a little pizzeria outside on the, on the little pavement outside the store. Yeah. And it just started from there, and the demand for that was unreal. I mean, I used to sell over three, 400 pizzas a night after 10 o'clock. Do, do nice. we know the nightclub, Charlie? It's Astrid here. Yeah, I have it, Astrid, as well. Yes, yeah, good. It's actually, the old in the old days, it was called the Ruba Lounge. Aha, uh-huh. uh, Ruba Lounge. Ah, yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. <laughs> now you yeah. you've come up with a concept of of not just serving pizzas, but but giving people the opportunity to choose what toppings they want on those pizzas. Talk us through this. How does it all work? That's it. The guys have got the freedom to choose what they want, when they want, how they want. So you don't go there and order a Regina or a Hawaiian pizza. You walk in there, you choose your base, you choose whatever toppings you want on the pizza. And you create your own pizza. That's how it works. And that's been a differentiator for you, hasn't it? Yeah, that's one of the big things. And also being open 24 hours is another mm. big thing. How did you get involved with a brand like Hogan Doss, which is obviously, it's not a South African-based brand. How did yeah. that kind of factor in? Uh, they actually approached me when I opened up my first store about five and a half years ago. They approached me and they just thought it's a premier brand and they wanted to put a premier product into the brand. And it's, we just, we work well together. It's got a good energy. Charlie, when you when you started that first store, did you have in mind that you would go the franchising route? That that's yeah, how you would grow the business? That was always my idea. Mm. How, how easy is it to do that? Because obviously that's not a very simple concept. No, look, it's, it's not easy. It's, it's hard work, but it's possible. And I was in the restaurant game before that, so I had a bit of experience. And funding? We, did you did funding you approach all, funders and investors, or did you do it all no, yourself? No, no, it was all, all self-funding. Hmm. All wow. self-funding. But it's not an expensive brand. I mean, uh, the setup costs aren't astronomical. They're affordable. Okay. And the stores are holding very well, thank God. You've, you've, obviously, well. you've obviously got to have a fair amount of luck when it comes to your concept. I mean, it's unproven until you start to franchise it uh, and you start yeah. to roll that out. Did you own the second store yourself or did you, uh, uh, did you sell that on to somebody else uh, as, no, your, as your first I franchise? The first, the, three, the first three stores were company owned, which were my stores. Right. And then from there, I opened up a fourth store, which was a franchise store. And at the moment, I'm sitting on six company owned and five franchise stores. Sorry, you broke but up the, there. Say that again. You've got six? We've got six company-owned stores yep. and five franchise stores at the moment. But we got uh, we could have, I think, over 850 written applications for stores, people wanting to open up That's and your stores. Mm. And Charlie, what is it t- typically, what would the cost range or the price range be for someone who would be looking at one of the Andichos? Look, it all depends on the size of the store, but roughly around about 950000 which okay. is a turnkey operation. Charlie, let's talk about um, the, the actual nuts and bolts of getting into being a franchisor. We've spoken to people who are franchisees who are paying license fees to, uh, to a franchisor. Your, uh, your, your position is, is one of having to train people, having to keep the standards up, having to make sure that your franchisees and your, your, your company-owned stores are keeping that quality. That's a hell of a thing to do across what you say. You've got 13 stores operating in the chain now. Yeah. Look, it is, it's hard work, but I've got a whole team on board. We've got guys that visit the stores every single day. We've got more than one guy. We've got area managers. We've got quality control guys who go around and check the pizzas, make sure things are up to standard, quality control, stock rotation. 
got coffee guys going around making sure the guys are making perfect cappuccinos. So we're trying to keep our standards up there. And do you do you decide where the andechos will be located, or does a franchisee have the opportunity to say, "Look, I've spotted X Y Z location, and I think there's room for for an andechos there"? How does that work? Yeah, look, we work hand in hand with the franchisee. If they approach us and they got a site, we'd go see the site with them. And if they are approved as a franchisee, then obviously we'd look at it. if they're happy and we're happy with the site, then we'd look at it and we'd open up a store. Expansion plans, Charlie. I mean, a lot of a lot of the uh, fast food franchises have started to look to Africa and other parts of the world. In any big plans like that on on the horizon? We've been approached to open up internationally. We've been approached by that, but look, still puppies in the game. We're not looking to open up. We're going to take it easy. We want to steadily grow. We want our franchisees to make money. We want to make money. We want everyone to be happy. As a franchise owner, what would you say are things you look for or would recommend to someone who wants to open up a franchise? Look, the biggest thing is we want owner operators. We don't want investors to come in. Just We've got people throwing money at us every single day wanting us to open up stores. But we're not looking for that. We're looking for owner operators. We want to grow the brand slowly and we want people to be involved in the business. And from a from a, a franchise point of view, what do you guys do to help develop and grow not only the store but the franchise owners or the franchisees as well? Look, we do a full turnkey operation before the store's opened. We do a full training, which is four weeks training with a franchisee, with a staff. And then once we open up the store, we send a whole crew into the store for a full month. We operate with a franchisor. And there on, there's always ongoing, we, we give them a lot of support. There's ongoing support throughout the franchise all the time. Can you explain what would be included in the turnkey operations? Well, that's your full store, as it is. As you walk into a store, it's, got, it's including your staff fully trained, it's your, your vehicles, it's your delivery box, it's your point of sale, it's your CC camera TVs. It's the whole store as you see it. Charles that's Astrid again. Um, tell me, do you look for a kind of personality? Uh, as you say, you get so many applications. I think you said 850 um, yeah. at any given time. Do you look for a certain type of personality for that uh, owner-manager? Not, not really. The guy's got to have just a basic idea of business. And from there, we train him up to our standards. And we also don't encourage the guys to actually be in their stores and run the stores themselves. Obviously, because there are 24 hours, you can't physically be there 24 hours. But the stores are all manager-run. So we've got good systems, good controls in place. And that's how we want the model to roll out. Was there anyone who ever said to you, you're crazy, Charlie? Everyone's <laughs> already doing pizza. Yeah. <laughs> many times, many times. <laughs> and how, how did you ignore them? <laughs> no, I just knew what I wanted to do and that's it. I had a goal and I just aimed for it and I went for it. I just want to quickly, before we go, sorry, Kriya, I'm, yeah. I want to jump in here and ask you about the about the delivery and the, the way that your business is set up. With all of these individual bits and pieces, I mean, it's... If you look at your menu, it's incredibly bitty and fragmented. You can have uh, you can have olives, you can have pineapple, you can have ham, you can have asparagus, you can have all of those bits and pieces. How does that work out from a, keeping the, the produce fresh, delivery every day? That's a logistical nightmare, surely. Look, we, we do delivery from our central kitchen daily. So we do delivery seven days a week. Our warehouse is open 24 hours a day. So your stock holding is not a lot in the store. You deliver daily to every single store. Right. Right. And, okay. And the guys, it's, it's all create your own. So you create your own salad, you choose your chopping, toppings, you create your own smoothie, whatever fruit you want, you create your own pizza. So the stock's always been rotated and always being used. Are you a good chef, Charlie? <laughs> I'd like to think I am. <laughs> <laughs> Have I got time for one more follow-up? Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Charlie, I want to know how you come up with an Anglo-Saxon name like Charlie with a Greek surname like Lysides. Lysides. With an Italian franchise name like Andizio. In a place like South Africa. It's actually Kiriago. My name is Kiriago Lysides in Greek. Okay, I get it. I understand completely. Charles, we'll stick with Charles. <laughs> that is fantastic. Well, listen, uh, it is always fascinating to speak to somebody who's done so well so far in their business. Uh, and, and I wish you luck with this new uh, this new store in the Leaping Frog. I'm sure that uh, the, the biggest parking lot in South Africa is going to be parking their cars outside your store one of these days. Yeah. Uh, you certainly, goodness knows, you've well, got... We'd love you to come visit us. Once we're up and running, come visit us. Sounds good. It's uh, certainly enough passing traffic going by that uh, that little yeah. center. So. There we go. Charlie L- Liasidis, right, thank you for your time uh, this morning. Thanks for having me on the show. All right, take care. Guys, all the best. Go well. Bye-bye. He sounds like a, a real mover and a shaker, doesn't he?
Jeez. <laughs> 13 stores, six company owned, uh, and he's rolling them out. 850 that applications. Is a lot. And he funded it himself that's when he amazing. started. That's a, that's a bit of a differentiator yeah. there. Yeah, we yeah, should yeah, get yeah. him back one day in future and chat further about that. I would love to speak to him a little bit more in depth. Yeah. He's, he sounds like a fascinating man. Yeah. Mm. The Business. Weekdays, 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. On balls.co.za. Brought to you by FNB Business Banking.